if you think about the scale, it's quite, quite interesting. 30% of all the greenhouse gases that we've ever emitted have been absorbed by the oceans. But they're getting saturated. They just can't absorb as much as they used to absorb. And we think within a matter of decades, they'll stop being able to absorb more. Which doesn't mean the heat will dissipate. It means the oceans won't be able to regulate as much of the atmosphere. And the atmospheric trends will get worse and more pronounced. So what are the countermeasures, if you like, the solutions that should be taken to deal with this? Well, there's a different series that you'd want to deal with both to minimize emissions and then to manage effects. On the emission side, ultimately, it has to be a climate change agreement. We have to move forward with the commitments we made in Paris and the next round of commitments after that and reduce the greenhouse gases that are leading to these changes. Carbon dioxide, which is absorbed by oceans and leads to acidification, isn't going to be stopped by an effort to manage the oceans themselves. You have to manage it at the source. And at the other end, you have to manage the impacts. And the impacts come from damages to coral reefs. They come from movement of fish species. They come from sea level rise. All of those require a host of strategies that are different from those to minimize emissions. And what about the polar ice cap? Because, as you know, there's a lot of argument about this. Some people say, well, the ice cap uh, historically has come and gone. It melts in the summer. It comes back in the winter. Are you particularly concerned about that? I'm deeply concerned about it. Now, we should distinguish a little bit between the northern ice cap, which is largely floating on top of the oceans, and the consequences of its melting, which is really going to make the oceans fresher. That salt water is diluted by all the fresh water that's in the ice. And one of the things we think will happen there is it could stop these large-scale ocean circulation patterns. The salt water uh, is critical as that. If it becomes fresh water, it doesn't behave the same way. And on the Antarctic side, we end up with land-based sources. And melting of those ice caps is going to lead to an enormous sea level rise. So we have problems on both poles, and they're looking more and more severe. And if you look at this conference, the third Our Oceans Conference uh, called by the uh, Secretary of State uh, in America, what, what, what has changed? What has come out of this conference that might actually deal with uh, these problems? I think a number of different things are coming out of the conference. The first is just an elevation and a recognition of the seriousness of the problem. The second, a whole host of pledges made around a variety of actions that people can take, mostly focused on the ocean side. So they're looking at mitigation, minimizing risk and damage. We're setting aside enormous areas as reserves for species so that they can actually continue to be sustained. We're looking at some no fishing zones. We're also looking at coastal protections. One of the problems we have with oceans is not just climate, but all these land-based sources of pollution. Managing those, an enormous benefit. And finally, I think we'll see later this afternoon in a panel that'll be held at the, near the end of the session, explicitly focused on climate, an elevation of the importance of working on the Paris Agreement and getting countries to reduce their emissions, which are creating part of these problems.